Our next speaker is making his way to get prepared, ladies and gentlemen. He is the Assistant Chief Executive of Government Chief Information Office at the Infocom Development Authority of Singapore. Mr. James Kang's presentation is a collaborative government at the new frontier. Mr. Kang oversees initiatives to harness Infocom technology to plan, develop, and implement the next generation of government. The GCIO manages whole of government programs in the nation's eGov 2015 master plan and the overall Infocom um, operation in various government agencies. In collaboration with the private sector, the GCIO plays a catalyst role as a change leader leveraging on ICT in transforming key industry sectors to gain competitive advantage. Mr. Kang started his career in 1984 at the then National Computer Board and subsequently joined Singapore Network Services Private Limited, where he successfully led the implementation of TradeNet the world's first nationwide integrated network linking 20 government agencies over 20,000 companies. It is with pride, ladies and gentlemen, I bring up on stage Mr. James Kang. Good morning. Can you hear me behind? You. Thank you for coming. And especially the overseas uh, guests uh, who flew great distances to be with us today. Of course, I hope if you have some time, do enjoy yourself in Singapore. Across the road, uh, we have a new attraction, Gardens by the Bay. We love plants and trees. We even give them air condition. <laughs> uh, if you have more time, visit our zoo. We have a night safari. Yes, it's true. Animals here do work overtime. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, uh, I think, HCS and DPN has done a fantastic job articulating the eGov. So I don't know whether that makes my job a lot easier or more difficult. <laughs> okay, snapshot where we are. I think we do reasonably well, uh, both locally as well as we track some international rating. But moving forward, I think it's going to be a lot more challenging. The world today, as you know, I just uh, spoke to the CEO of Stock Exchange. Perception in the U.S. just wipe out six months of gains in our stock exchange. And even if you buy bonds, you are not spared. So this is how volatile the world is, full of black swans and wicked problems. It, it just makes the uh, issues a lot more complex. And the worst thing is changing very fast. What does it mean to us? It means more and more solutions are develop, cannot be developed by one agency. We need multi-agency collaboration, sometimes even whole of government, sometimes even international collaboration. Well, the good news is uh, technology has been uh, progressing very fast. It's uh, into all aspects of work as well as personal life. And this created a connected world where knowledge is shared and uh, people become more sophisticated. But as a result as well, a sophisticated citizenry will require us to deliver even better services. So it's no surprise that today the collaborative government defines the master plan. And I remember the former head of civil service, Peter Ho, uh, he told me this master plan will be the most challenging and most difficult compared to the past. Well, if you look at the past, it's very logical. We computerized. In 2000, we moved almost every services to e-services. And then in uh, 2006, we integrate the government to make it more seamless. But if you look at the three master plans, they are basically technology-focused. The collaborative government it's about shift of mindset. It's about cultural change. It's about the role of government, what we should do, what we should not do, what we should do differently. It's about business model. It's about people. And that's why he says this will be the most challenging. And so, to be a collaborative government that co-creates and connects with our people, government will continue to deliver services even better. 
But in many other areas, we will co-create with the people in the private sector. And then we'll continue to connect with the people, to engage them, to involve them, so that we can understand them better and together get ideas to draft policies as well as programs. And of course, the bottom one, catalyzing where to start from within. So this is a shift from government for you to government with you. Now, the analogy will be, you know, in the past, government is like a chef in a restaurant and the citizens are the customers. And so government will cook all the dishes and the citizens will comment, this is good, this is no good. And government will fix it. In the collaborative government with co-creation, actually, the citizen is also in the kitchen. So there's also a mindset shift from the citizen that government and citizen together has to own the issues and have to work together. And in fact, one of the plus in this is that increasingly you see citizens helping citizens. And that is uh, something that we should really going to be positive. Now let's take a look at what uh, DPN meant when you said, uh, you know, we have to put the user first. You know, they say that the children look like the parents, right? Every time you see a child, you say, oh, you look like the mother. No, this one looks like the father. Or it has a combination of features. Hopefully, they are good features. Similarly, interestingly, organization, when they produce something, it looks like the organization. So for the e-citizen, if you look at the left, right hand, which you can't see well, it's actually how government is organized. But if you really ask a question, why are we building this? Who are we building it for? And then, what should we do and how to do it? You realize that you should put the citizen at the center. So, this should be the new design, which was launched uh, last year. Because citizens, as you know people, search is one of the most common way they use. And so, we remove all the clutter. Of course, there are a lot of design principles, which I won't go into it. Simpler writing, creeps, accurate, consistent. And as DPM said, data may reside in many agencies, but we have to be customer-centric. Put them all into one. And use simple things like infographics. Put everything together, although they come from different agencies. So a picture paints a thousand words. And a video paints a thousand pictures. If you need to show how, just show a simple video as YouTube has shown us. You know, I bought a Nokia phone. If you have a Nokia phone, it's impossible to remove the back. I can read the instruction and I'm still not clear. But when you went to YouTube, within five seconds, put your thumb here and your index finger, tongue, it's open. <laughs> so I think video has a, is a tremendous way to really show people how to do it. Similarly, for correspondences, put all into one, one inbox. Well, I don't know, some of you, uh, do you have this green complimentary parking? I always love uh, complimentary parking. And, but the problem is you have to take out your cash card, right, before you move out. And I always forget to put it back. And then when I go into uh, cross a gantry, I got fine. So I say it can't be worse than this. But it got worse because I forgot to pay on time. And when, uh, when the letter comes in red, you know you're in trouble. So I think there is a place for important meals, private sector meals for the citizens. And of course, for our businesses, our corporate citizens, uh, DPN has mentioned some of these. We continue to make it simpler, clearer, faster. The trade net, who has been around for some time, has undergone continuous improvement. And according to Yen, it's still the fastest turnaround with a minimal touch point. Core net for construction was mentioned by DPM. Uh, continue to save money and uh, have a speed of turnaround to reduce costs. This file, surprisingly in the past, things can be so complicated. It takes 35,000 sometimes just to have a transaction done. Today, through simplification, through technology, everything must be less than 300. 
And of course, the online business, uh, online license, uh, business license system uh, will be replaced by Frontier to continue to improve the turnaround time as well as uh, savings by further integrating all the agencies involved in licensing. All the good practices will also be continued to be employed there. So there may be a lot of complexity within the organization, within the agencies, but then an e-advisor, a simple question and answer, will be the way to really shield the businesses from all this complexity. So that they will know which license they need to apply. They have a 360 view of all the licenses they have, as well as uh, good practices like data, then data entered only once. Next, there will be a series of services that will be done through co-creation. And that's where data.gov.sg comes in. And DPM was right. The private sector has gone ahead first. You remember Apple in 2005, the App Store, over three years, half a million applications, wonderful applications. Apple could have the money to build 500,000 applications, but they will never have the creativity and the innovation to do such wonderful apps. In fact, those days you hear every citizen is a developer of Apple. So similarly, government as a platform with data will be a tremendous infrastructure. And over here, data that comes from agencies, textual data, as well as geospatial data. You'll see the growth and the importance of geospatial data coming into this. And one of the most wonderful thing when private sector come in is that there's a mashup of data between government as well as the private sector. And that will give you quantum leap in the value of the apps.